Well, greetings everyone. Uh, happy Wednesday. Hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving last week. I uh, wanted to share a little bit with you from the book of Exodus. So if you have your Bible, if you want to turn to the book of Exodus chapter 1, and I'm going to read uh, uh, a little bit here starting in verse 6. So you know the background. <clears throat> um, uh, Jacob uh, realizes they're in trouble uh, because of the famine and uh, they need uh, food because uh, there's no water. The Lord has worked it out where Joseph now is in, uh, he is in Egypt and they get to go to Egypt uh, and, li and live there. Um, a new Pharaoh takes over uh, and he's, he's concerned about what's going on. So let, let's read here. <clears throat> Uh, then Joseph died and all his brothers and all of that generation, but the Israelites were prolific and increased greatly. They multiplied and became extremely strong so that the land was filled with them. So I got Israelites all over Egypt. Um, Come, let us deal shrewdly with them. So this is the Pharaoh talking uh, so that they will not multiply and in the event of war, join our enemies and fight against this and escape from the land. It's pretty legitimate. You got people right around your country. They're technically foreigners. Now, they've done nothing to suggest that they would go against them in war or a battle. Nothing like that at all. Or that they were going to try to overtake take Egypt. But this new pharaoh, he's not familiar with Joseph, the agreement they had, how Joseph had provided them uh, in that land. Otherwise, the, the nation would have suffered and probably perished if it weren't for Joseph and God's hand in this thing. Uh, but he's afraid. He does. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to be in that position. Uh, so they set taskmasters over them to oppress them with hard labor. And the sons of Israel built Python and Ramses as storage cities for Pharaoh. But the more the Egyptians oppressed them, the more they multiplied and expanded so that the Egyptians dreaded and were exacerbated by the Israelites. They're trying to beat these people down. They were harsh. Uh, they went from people that were sharing the land and, and being a blessing to Egypt, which, by the way, that is the way it tends to be with the Jewish people. Wherever they're around, things go well for those people around them. And that ought to be the way it is for us as well as Christians. Yep. Um, so they, they build these cities, uh, the Egyptians are exacerbated. Um, they made their lives bitter with hard labor and mortar, brick, and all kinds of field work. And their labor was harsh and severe. <clears throat> now, just to consider a couple things about the, the story overall. Um, the Lord, uh, the Lord, provides for Jacob and Israel, but not how you would think. It's like, okay, so there's a famine in the land. All right, well, the Lord's going to bring, I'm sure they were praying that he would bring water. He would bring rain uh, to the people of Israel. Um, but no, he brings them to Egypt in order to provide for them. Uh, not the way you would expect. You have uh, Pharaoh who desires to control or put down, keep Israel under their thumb, to oppress them. <clears throat> and in God's wisdom, um, he, he, he allows, and, and in doing that, Pharaoh is very, very harsh. I mean, taking these babies, uh, these uh, uh, men or, or boy, male babies, and throwing them into the Nile, I cannot imagine uh, the the, the weeping and the grief, uh, how these women and moms and dads suffered in that. I, just a horrible, horrible, evil thing. You, I don't think you could over overestimate how tragic uh, that that is or that, that it was. But in God's wisdom, Pharaoh was saying, okay, I'm going to keep you under my thumb. I'm going to kill a bunch of you off so that you're no longer a threat to me. But then... Moses is saved in that same river, and in God's wisdom, Pharaoh raises Moses in his own house, the one that ultimately delivers Israel from Egypt and conquers Egypt. 
I mean, what a, I, I mean, here you go. The, the Lord's going to provide for Israel, but not in Israel. He's going to take them over to Egypt. The Egyptians turn on them severely. And in order to save them, Pharaoh ends up raising the deliverer in his own house because his sister, his daughter is the one who pulled Moses out of the Nile. It's just wild. It is, it, the wisdom of the Lord um, is it's just staggering. <clears throat> And I think we need to realize as Christians, and the scripture supports this in other places, that, that if you think you got everything planned out, uh, things should go such and such way in my life. Um, after all, I've prayed, the Lord will direct me in such and such way. Boy, don't, uh, don't be surprised if the Lord just totally turns things around. And don't get discouraged if they don't go the way that you think they ought to. Because the Lord, he just has the perspective. He sees, he knows everything, and he know, He wants what's best for us because he loves us. And sometimes that plan doesn't look anything like you think it should. And in this case, that is certainly, certainly the case. Um, <clears throat> interesting uh, as well, it says that the Israelites because of their oppression, the slavery, they built the cities of Python and Ramses. And uh, history tells us that the belief is that the um, Israelites probably built a lot of the pyramids, you know, worked slave labor and things like that. <clears throat> um, and they're great monuments that still exist. But can, can you imagine if you're an Israelite and you're working like a dog, you're under slavery and you're building something, a whole city, a whole pyramid, for a place that you're not staying. That's not your home. It's just temporary. And you're putting all that work and sweat, um, all the effort, all the planning, all the physical labor, um, all the ideas to come with, okay, how are we gonna move this big block over to here to build this pyramid? How are we gonna make this city work? All that effort. And it's somewhere that you're not even staying. Uh, but it really goes to show us in this world, um, we have to be careful the amount of effort that we put in to this temporary place. We're not staying here either. And we have to be careful that it doesn't uh, take up and consume too much of our time and our effort, our thoughts, our worries, uh, because we're not going to be here long. And that is why the Lord tells us we want to work towards a heavenly kingdom, heavenly treasures. Uh, these things we need here, they have their place. You know, you need your house and your water and, and such. But... Um, to build and build and build an empire or something here that we're not going to keep, kind of silly. And I and I bet I bet um, the Israelites felt the same way. Um, another thought uh, in verse in verse uh, number fifteen, it says, "Then the king said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Ship, uh, Shipra, which means beauty, and the other named Pua, which means splendor." Uh, so he talks to these ladies, and perhaps you know the story, before they, he decides just to throw all the babies in the Nile, he tells these two ladies, listen, uh, when the Hebrew wives have boys, they kill them. And uh, they just wouldn't do it. They lied. They said, oh, well, they have them so fast. You know, these Hebrew women, uh, you know, they're cooking breakfast. Next thing you know, boom, out comes the baby. We don't have the time to go over and even find out what's going on. Um, uh, but they don't do it. They refuse to obey uh, the order from Pharaoh. And I just love that. You know, it's like, yeah, we follow the law of the land, sure. Uh, but when it's contrary to what the Lord wants us to do, absolutely not. And these ladies stood up for what was right. Yeah, they lived in Egypt, <clears throat> uh, probably a nice place initially before they started oppressing them. Um, but uh, it, it didn't have their heart. They weren't going to disobey and go against what, what God had had ordered them or what God would have them do. Love these ladies. Beauty and splendor. And boy, that is, I don't know what these ladies look like, but boy, that is beautiful and there is splendor when you see an obedience to God, even if it means uh, potential harm to your life. God bless you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day.